So today we are starting our demonstration session first. As we know, demonstration that is our senior student teachers are sharing what they had experienced throughout their experience in the teacher career. So I invite our group of Alina Ilzaraj, Anju Lakshmi, and Mohita Panikya for discuss as the topic of separation of misters. I hope all the junior students will make it as a learning experience as the student teacher. So hereby over to the team. Yes, uh, Alina, yes. A very good morning, good afternoon to one and all. Here we are come across with another session of peer teaching. And this is a shared class done by we three teachers. Myself, Mohit Arpanike. I'm Alina El Saraj. I'm Anju Lakshmi. Anju. Anju, are you yes, eating Mohit. something? Yes, Mohit, I'm eating a snack. What snack? Mm, mixture, do you, do you, Mohit, do you know about this snack called mixture? No. I heard the, that term in chemistry. Oh, good. So, what are the components in that? Uh, Mohit, I'm not sure about its components. Uh, that is groundnut and a stick-like thing, then some ball-like thing. I'm not sure about its name. Oh, uh, it's, it's very tasty. Com it's a combination of uh, two or more components, right? Yes, Mohit. Oh, OK. Anju, can you separate the groundnut from that mixture? Yes, Mohit. I can easily separate the groundnut and the sticky things and the ball-like structures. I can easily separate it with my hands. Oh, really? Okay, so today we are dealing with such a topic called mixtures. In chemistry also we have mixtures. So do you know what is a mixture? In chemistry, when two or more substances mix with each other without participating in a chemical change, the resulting substance is called a mixture. Mixtures have so many properties. The components of mixtures each keep their original properties. The separation of components can be easily done. The proportion of the components is variable. Next is the classification of the mixtures and it will deal it by uh, Alina. So, so far you have considered the definition of mixtures. Now, this mixtures is divided into two homogeneous mixture, mixtures and heterogeneous mixtures. So let's find out what they are. Mixture in which the composition of is uniform throughout the mixture is known as homogeneous mixture and the examples are blood, sugar solution, etc. Whereas the mixture in which the composition is not uniform throughout the mixture is known as heterogeneous mixtures. So these are the two classification of mixtures in general. And the example for heterogeneous mixtures are salt and paper. And uh, we, can, we also know that one of the example is sandy water. So the further session will be done by Anjulakshmi. Yes. So let's go on, let's go on to our topic. Today's topic is separation of mixture. So we know what is our mixture, the types of mixture. Now let's see how to separate it. Okay. So today we are going to deal with nine methods of separating a mixture. And let's see it one by one. For that, let me share my screen. I hope the screen is visible. Yes, Anjali. Uh, one minute. Yes. Okay. So the screen is visible to you and let's begin. So today we are going to learn about the separation of solids from liquid. You all know that there are two solids, insoluble solids, and soluble solids. 
insoluble solids. The example is sand in water. And what about soluble solids? Yes, the, the mixture we get when we dissolve sugar in water. It is an example of soluble solids. So now let's deal how to separate insoluble solids from liquids. There are three methods and let's deal it one by one. First one is sedimentation. It's quite familiar to you, right? Sedimentation. Yes, sedimentation is a process in which heavier insoluble particles settle down at the bottom. So once more, in this heavier insoluble particles settle down at the bottom and the solid particles which settle down at the bottom are called sediments. Okay, now let's see the figure. In the first beaker, we are dissolving sand in water. We all know that sand is insoluble in water. So what happens when we mix together? The sands do not get soluble. And then the third beaker, we get sand settled down at the bottom of the beaker and the water is left behind. And this sand at the beaker, at the bottom of the beaker is called sediments. So this is a clear example of the process sedimentation. Now we have separated sand and water. Now we got a clear water above and at the bottom we got sand particles called sediments. Now the next method, it is decantation. Decantation is very simple. It is the process of pouring out the clear water slowly into another container without disturbing the sediments. So we saw the solution or the mixture in the third beaker. We are pouring out the clear water into another beaker. We won't disturb the sediments. This is quite clear in the picture. This is called decantation. So we got sand separately and water also in a separate beaker. That we separated two substances or that we separated two mixtures, a mixture. Now let's go on to the next process. That is filtration. Filtration is very familiar to you, right? Yes, we have the you, filtration is the process by which two fine insoluble substances are separated by using filter paper. Please don't get confused by this definition. It's very simple. You all might have used a sieve or a strainer to drain tea. That is to get the tea leaves separately and to get the tea. That is the process called filtration. And the particles, and now let's go on to the filtration conducted in the lab. In that, we use the filter paper instead of this strainer. Okay, filter paper, it's some uh, paper made of a particular material and, and we get uh, some residues or some the insoluble particles in the filter paper and that is called residue. Okay, now let's see the apparatus in which we use in laboratory. This is the apparatus. We have a conical flask and then we have a funnel and a filter paper. We pour the water with insoluble impurities into the funnel containing filter paper. And then we receive the clear water in the conical flask and this is called filtrate. Okay, and the residue or the insoluble impurities which we obtain in the, in the filter paper is called residue. So two terms, residue and filtrate. Hope you understood filtration. Now the fourth process, it's very simple. By looking at the picture itself, you understood what it is. Yes, it is magnetic We separate magnetic substances from a mixture by using a simple magnet. So this method involves the separation of magnetic substances from non-magnetic substance by means of magnets. Okay, so these are the four methods of separation of mixture. And now let's see the fifth mixture and that will be dealt by Mohit.
Okay. The next method is evaporation. You know what is evaporation? Evaporation is a type of vaporization that occurs on the surface of a liquid as it changes into gas phase. This separation technique can be used to separate solutes that are dissolved in solvent by boiling the solution. The solvent gets vaporized, leaving back the solute. The, this, method of this method is called evaporation. And the factors are uh, concentration of the substance evaporating in the air, uh, and the flow rate of air, pressure, temperature, surface area, and intermolecular forces. And the application of evaporations are uh, recovering salts from solution, uh, the use of evaporation to dry or concentrate samples is a common preparatory step for many laboratories, analyses such as uh, spectroscopy and chromatography. And the next one is crystallization. Uh, this is one of the most commonly used techniques for the purification of salt organic compounds. And it is based on the uh, difference in the solubilities of the compound and the impurities in the suitable solvent. Uh, crystallization is the process by which a salt forms where the atoms or molecules are highly organized into a structure known as a crystal. And it is used to separate a dissolved hard label salt from a solution. Uh, the most minerals and uh, organic molecules crystallize easily and the resulting crystals are generally good quality that is without visible defects. Uh, the, the crystallization of uh, three steps, the, it consists of mainly three steps. The first step is uh, the solution is heated to evaporate off uh, most of the solvent to make hot and nearly saturated solution. After which uh, the hot solution is, to, the hot solution to is to kept for cooling naturally. The solubility of the solute decreases as the solution is cooled and the excess solute, which can, which can longer be dissolved in the saturated solution, crystallizes out of the solution. And the third step is the crystals which are formed can be separated from the remaining solution by filtration. We can see the image. Here's a basin, here is an evaporating basin. Uh, the solution is heated uh, to evaporate most of the solvent. And the step two is uh, the hot solution is allowed to cool and the salt appears as pure crystals. And the step three, the cold solution is poured off to obtain the crystals. The crystals may be dried by pressing them between the sheets of filter paper. And its major applications are, it's used for the purification of drugs, separation of crystals from alum from the impurity samples, etc. The next method is sublimation. It's a simple method. Uh, you know what is sub sublimation? Uh, sublimation is the transition of a substance directly from the salt to the gas phase without passing through the intermediate liquid phase. That is, it is directly go from the salt to the gas phase without passing through the intermediate liquid phase. This technique takes advantage of substances sublimable property. Separate a mixture of solids containing one which sub sublimes and the one which does not by heating the mixture. And its major applications are separate iodine from sand, uh, dye supply, sublimation printers help in uh, rendering digital pictures in, in a detailed and realistic fashion, which helps in the analysis of substance. Sublimation finds practical application in forensic sciences. And that's all. Uh, the further topics will be dealt by uh, Alina. Alina, your mic is mute. Hope you can see the presentation. Yes, sir, you know, we can see. So, so far you have considered the six methods for the separation of mixtures. Now we can see the simple distillation, fractional distillation and chromatography. So, first of all, we can consider what is this distillation. 
So distillation is an effective method to separate mixtures comprised of two or more pure liquids that are called components. And the separation of mixture of liquid is based only on the physical property, which is called boiling point. And the distillation is a process of purification where the components of a liquid mixtures are vaporized and then condensed and then isolated. So the three methods that are doing in the distillation process is vaporization, condensation, and isolation of that particular liquid. And the mixture is heated until one of the components is boiled. If we are considering two liquids, we are considering the boiling point of these two liquids. So the mixture is heated until one of the component boils. That is, that it is turned to vapor. And the vapor is then fed into a condenser, which cools the vapor and changes it back to a liquid that is called distillate. And the remaining part in the original container is known as residue. So let's watch the experimental setup of sim, uh, simple distillation. Here in this picture, you can see the apparatus are, there is a heating, heating mantle, which is required to supply the heat. And above the heating mantle, you can see a 250 ml round bottom flask where our the solution is kept. And above that, there is a distillating head where the thermometer is fixed using a thermometer adapter. And from the sideways, there is a water condenser in which this vapor is passed out and condensed as a result of the circulation of water in this water inlet and water outlet. So the water is circulating over this water condenser. So you can see in this picture. And the outcome, the water vapor, which is condensed, and the, as a result of that, the liquid is coming, uh, coming out, and it is received, is received using a 100 ml round bottom flask. And you can see that in this picture, this round bottom flask is kept in an ice bath. So what is the reason for this keeping in a, uh, uh, what is the reason for keeping this in an ice bath? So in order to receive it in a particular temperature without contamination of that particular liquid, we are keeping that in an ice bath. So this is all about simple distillation. So now let's see what is fractional distillation. So apart from the figure of sim uh, simple uh, distillation, there is a slight difference in this fractional distillation, that is there is a presence of fractionating column above the round water flask. So here this fractionating, uh, frac uh, fractionating column consists of glass beads. So in order to uh, cool that uh, paper arising from the round bottom flask, this fractionating column is added in this fractional distillation. So what is the difference between simple, uh, fractional, simple distillation and fractional distillation is that in the simple distillation, we are considering the liquids, uh, if we are considering the two liquids, uh, two separate liquids, miscible liquids, the boiling point of the two miscible liquids will be desperate. That will be a huge difference in the boiling point. While considering the fract fractional distillation, the boiling point will have a uh, slight difference. So here we are, uh, one of the apparatus that we have added in the fractional distillation is nothing but a fractional Column. So all other steps are as similar that of uh, simple distillation. Here also it is received in a round bottom flask which is kept in an ice pad. So this is all about simple distillation and fractional distillation. Hope you understand these two concepts. Now let's move to uh, uh, some details of uh, this simple and fractional distillation which is given in a concept map. That is the two types are simple and fractional distillation. And the application of simple distillation, it is used for the separation of acetone and water, and it is also used for the distillation of alcohol. Whereas the fractional distillation, its application are separation of different fractions from petroleum products, that is crude oil, from the crude oil separate uh, uh, products are formed, uh, formed or extracted by using this distillation and the separation of mixture of methanol and ethanol, whereas the temperature of methanol and methanol is 65 degrees Celsius and ethanol is 78 degrees Celsius. So as I have already told, the boiling point of these two liquids will be uh, having a slight change in fractional distillation, whereas uh, in simple distillation, there will be a desperate uh, change in boiling point. So now let us consider the applications. 
the applications of uh, distillation at separation of volatile oils, separation of drugs obtained from plant or animal sources, that is vitamin A from fish liver oil, and the purification of organic solvents, manufacture of official preparations, that is spirit for nitrous ether, spirit of ammonia, distilled water, and water for ingestion. And the last application given is refining petroleum products. Now let's consider the last method for the separation of mixture, that is chromatography. So chromatography is a separation technique used to separate the different components in a liquid mixture. And the mixture is dissolved in a fluid called the mobile phase, which is carried through a structure holding another material called stationary phase. So, so the two phases that we are considering in chromatography are mobile phase and a stationary phase. The chromatography is a wall separation technique which has many methods or has different principles of separation involved. Now let's watch a video in order to understand this technique more detail. Chromatography. Chromatography is a separation technique used to separate the different components in a liquid mixture. There are different types of chromatographic techniques such as column chromatography, TLC, paper chromatography and gas chromatography. Paper chromatography is one of the important chromatographic methods. Paper chromatography uses paper as the stationary phase and a liquid solvent as the mobile phase. In paper chromatography, a spot of the mixture is put on the paper and the paper is carefully dipped into a solvent. The solvent rises up the paper due to capillary action and the components of the mixture rise up at different rates and thus get separated from one another. Materials required Chromatographic chamber Wattman filter paper strip, capillary tubes, measuring cylinder, thread, isopropyl alcohol, mixture of red and blue inks, distilled water, glass rod, scale and pencil. Procedure Take a Wattman filter paper strip and draw a line with a pencil above 2 cm from one end. Put a pencil mark at the center of the line. Now, line. Now, take a capillary tube and dip it into the beaker containing a mixture of red and blue inks. Using the capillary tube, put a drop of the mixture of red and blue inks at the central point of the line. Allow it to dry in open air. Again, take the mixture of red and blue inks using the capillary tube. Put another drop on the same spot and dry it again so that the spot is rich in mixture. Now, take a piece of thread and tie the filter paper with it and suspend the filter paper vertically in the chromatographic chamber containing the solvent, which is a mixture of 80% isopropyl alcohol and 20% water. Make sure the pencil line remains about 1 cm above the solvent level. Keep the chamber undisturbed for some time. Notice the rise in solvent along with the mixture of red and blue inks. When the solvent has risen, you will notice two different spots of blue and red colors on the filter paper. Take the filter paper out of the chamber and mark the distance that the solvent has risen on the paper with a pencil. This is called the solvent front. Dry the paper and put pencil marks in the center of the blue and red spots. Measure the distance of the solvent front from the original line and the distance of the two spots from the original line. 
calculate the RF values of the blue and red inks by using the formula. RF is equal to distance traveled by the solute from the original line divided by the distance traveled by the solvent from the original line. So that's all about paper chromatography. So we have considered the chromatography and there were different techniques for considering uh, uh, doing this chromatography and we have considered only paper chromatography. And it is used, the, it is the most common type of chromatography that the paper here, the paper is the stationary phase and this uses capillary action to pull the solutes up through the paper and separate the solutes. The other methods are given in this table that is liquid uh, chromatography, gas chromatography, thin layer chromatography. So, and the application and one, why and what it is used is given in this uh, table. So let's uh, find some, uh, so, so far we have considered uh, the different uh, methods for the separation of mixtures. So the conclusion will be done, uh, uh, sum up will be done by Anju. Okay class, so we dealt with separation of mixtures. Actually we dealt with about 9 to 10 methods of separating mixtures. I hope it's very clear. Now let's see a concept map or a mind map in the separation of mixture. And Alina will be sharing the screen and let's see that. So in the beginning, we started with the definition of mixture and I hope you will never forget the definition of mixture. Just remember the snack mixture and write the definition. It's made up of different components and they can be separated easily. That is the simple definition of mixture. Then we, then we found the classification of mixtures in the homogeneous mixtures and heterogeneous mixture. Then our star of today's session, that is the separation of mixture. About nine to 10 methods of separation of mixture. The first four is sedimentation, decantation, filtration, magnetic separation. These are used to separate solids from the mixture. Then we dealt with sublimation, evaporation, and crystallization. I hope each process is very clear to you. Don't get confused by evaporation and sublimation. There is a chance for you to get mixed up with the two processes, but don't get confused. In evaporation, liquid changes into gas, and in sublimation, the vice versa, not vice versa, gas changes into solid. Then we dealt with distillation, the two types of distillation, simple distillation and fractional distillation. A simple distillation, the mixture will be containing liquids having a boiling point, which are very different. Then the fractional distillation, the mixtures will be having liquids with slight difference in their boiling point. Then we saw chromatography, we saw in detail the process of chromatography and different types of chromatography. That was our today's session and I hope each and every point is very clear to you. Now let's go on to our review questions. And here is our review questions you all have to answer. Explain the difference between sedimentation and decantation. Second question, which method is used to separate colored substances from each other? And the third one, which method is used to separate crude oil? And the last question, what is the difference between sublimation and crystallization? So what is the difference between sublimation and crystallization? Okay, now here is a follow-up activity for you. The first one is you have four mixtures with you. That is one conflicts and milk. Second one is oil in water. Third one, salt in water. And the fourth one, sugar in water. So the question is this, which of the following mixture can be separated by filtration? The second question uh, for your follow-up activity is how to separate a mixture of acetone and water. And the third one is how will you separate a mixture of common salt, sand and iron fillings. So that's all for you today. Hope all of you understand the concept of separation of mixtures. So we the team signing off. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Special congrats to the team.
now we are ending the session here after 5 minutes we will rejoin in another session okay bye okay ma'am